Hello friends, I'm Dr. Larry Mitnall, a board certified child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist. So welcome back. Now are you or someone you know wondering if a child in your life uh, is struggling with a developmental delay? Uh, this is a question that I often get and receive from parents, so I've made some time for us to discuss. We'll talk signs, we'll talk diagnosis, and you'll want to stay till the end to hear where you can find some resources um, from some of the for the little people in your life, so you don't want to miss it. All right, and before we jump in, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe below. Doing so helps us in a number of ways, and most importantly, it helps us to reach our mission of supporting kids and families and all those who care for them. Are you ready? All right, let's get started. When we think about the intellectual capacity of our children, we often think you know, IQ tests and aptitude scores like the SAT. In psychiatric terms, intellectual disability um, also known as intellectual developmental disorder, is a much broader term. And that term refer refers to uh, both the intellectual lives of our children as well as their adaptive functioning. So by intellect, we mean the ability for children to reason or problem solve, um, the ability to think abstractly, uh, their academic performance may fit in that category as well. Their ability to learn by experience, so by doing and being a part of the process. And also uh, planning, in addition to the standardized achievement tests uh, that you're probably quite familiar with. So you can see this is a really wide net. Mental retardation was a term previously used, which has since been replaced by the term intellectual disability. Um, in most medical publications and citations and, and research uh, that you'll find. Uh, there's a federal statute known as Rosa's Law that led to um, this significant terminology change in many states actually around 2010. So here are some signs uh, with an example of each thing. Uh, not meant to be exhaustive, but things to get you thinking about what parents and caregivers may notice. Um, so, for instance, delays in walking or sitting upright. So think about a 20-month-old maybe who crawls and rolls uh, rather than walks. Uh, difficulty understanding social rules and norms. So think about a, a three- or four-year-old with persistent biting habits. Um, a delayed speech or difficulty speaking. So think here, you know, stutter or stammer or lisps. Um, difficulties with logical thinking. So uh, think about school-age kids who aren't um, relating kind of cause and effect. So in order for a child to meet the formal diagnosis of intellectual disability, again, also called um, intellectual developmental disorder or IDD in some circles, a child must have difficulties in both areas of reasoning and this adaptive uh, functioning. So additionally, these deficits have to be present um, during their earliest stages of development. So. What's interesting is that often several specialties are involved in providing a really comprehensive evaluation for children. Uh, and this may include uh, me medical tests um, and evaluations by experts in, in, different, uh, in different disciplines like neurology and psychology, maybe hearing, speech, uh, vision, and special education. And the diagnosis is often further clarified um, in these evaluations is either mild, moderate, severe, or profound. So to, as to assess where a child's abilities may fall, we evaluate three different uh, domains within this. The first area deals with core reasoning, which we've been talking about. So those, again, think here, you know, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Um, but as you get older, maybe time, money, management, things like that. The next area that uh, gets assessed is also social ability. So um, here, think about you know, communication skills and interpersonal skills. And the third area is self-care, or what we commonly call kind of activities of daily living. So think brushing your teeth or getting dressed or doing one's hair, um, all the preparatory stages. So there is some nuance in judging these things. You know, for instance, uh, with preschool children, it can be really difficult to assess their core reasoning abilities. Um, so evaluation in those uh, in that population can be limited. I mean, in those cases, you may hear or read or um, use the term, you know, global developmental delay, which applies to those who are less than five years old, for whom we can't, you know, reliably uh, do the full assessment we'd like. 
In those cases, we have to rely on often evaluating how well uh, kids are meeting their developmental milestones. So uh, like walking or talking or building blocks or drawing shapes. For school age kids and adults, we might expect to see difficulties in academic subjects um, to evaluate their kind of core reasoning skills and cognition. With older adults, we would expect difficulty with abstract reasoning and maybe some executive uh, functions. So for those who are you know, over the age of five, there can be times where it isn't possible to fully assess due to some type of uh, physical impairment such as you know, blindness or uh, prelingual deafness. So that's deafness occurring before someone's had a chance to acquire um, speech. Um, there might be limitations due to uh, severe movement difficulties in a child or even severe behavioral or psychiatric uh, conditions. So in these cases, we use the term unspecified intellectual disability, or you might also see um, the term intellectual developmental disorder. So again, IDD. So some of the social things we might see with kids um, who are struggling um, would include things like uh, maybe difficulty perceiving appropriate social cues. Uh, for instance, maybe there's a child who's misreading their parents, you know, joyful or even, you know, benign expression as hostility or disgust. Um, the, the ability for a child to kind of regulate their own emotions may also be difficult or strained uh, for these kids. And that, too, would be part of the assessment. And again, that third area of uh, self-care and um, what's called kind of practical skills um, are just as we've discussed previously. So I hope that this has helped clarify um, what we mean from a psychiatric standpoint of, um, of this diagnosis and how it can look and how kids um, and adults can be assessed. So early recognition of these challenges is really important in helping children to access the care they need at school, in community, and certainly at home. And so many individuals can go on to live, you know, either partially or fully independent lives, especially with uh, great support in early intervention. So if you are concerned that, you know, your child may be struggling in one or more areas, the first thing to do is really begin the conversation with your child's doctor. Lastly, do not panic. If your doctor has concerns and requests uh, further evaluation, it's for the good of your child. And again, um, we look for hope and building on the strengths that your child was born in the world with. All children are different and come with struggles that often prepare the way for use of their unique gifts. So hug them tightly, all right? That's doctor's orders. Uh, so as a final word, treatment may come in many forms, including you know, family support and education. Um, there may be case management services, uh, particular therapies aimed at, at helping build their skills, and in some cases, medications. So for more information uh, regarding diagnosis and other related neurodevelopmental disorders, uh, check out the links below, both local and national. Also stay tuned for our What's Next series, which will be a continuation of discussions like these um, where we dig in to help you, know, you parents think about the next steps for helping your kids to thrive. Until then, my friends, take good care and please be well. Thank you.